Good morning again. We are back. It is the 5th day of December 2022. It is about 10.30 in the morning. I am still Scott. That is still Bo. And there is still a co-pilot in the co-pilot seat. It's Kitten. How you guys doing? Yes. Now we're going to do the video on China. I started off the other video this morning uh, talking about that. Which video was that, Scott? That was that one. Talking about the thought crime pre-crime project. <laughs> and uh, I started mentioning, I started talking about this situation because I thought I was going to do it all in one video, but I decided to do it in two because the first one was too long. So here we go. Let's zap back to the Fox News report. Gordon Chang blasts global leftists adoration for Chinese government system. Oh, my God. Mark Levine criticizes World Economic Forum Chief Klaus Schwab. Oh, no. How dare you talk talk pleasantly about fucking China. <laughs> this is what, uh, this is, this is from Fox News. Uh, Gatestone Institute fellow and China expert Gordon Chang sounded off when asked about how leftist figures in the Western world often show admiration for China's strongman system of government, governance. Cheng was asked uh, such in the, in the wake of the organic protests. Organic, they're organic! That cropped up on, uh, across the world's most populous country in objection to coronavirus lockdown mandates and a fatal apartment fire. They're all wrong, he said, citing World Economic Forum boss Klaus Schwab, among other figures, following the fire on the 24th in Rumki. Immediately there were protests all around China, north, south, east, and west. These were spontaneous. They were not coordinated. Now, I showed you uh, the other day in a video, and I forget which one it was. Uh, you know what? I can fix that. <laughs> I showed you in this video um, that they were pissed off because the Chinese had shut down uh, certain communication apps uh, and they were using them to find the leaders of these fucking faux protests. Uh, the protests that really weren't about mandates. They were attacking aid workers and healthcare workers, unguarded <coughs> healthcare workers, attacking them for content but um when the real cops showed up oddly enough they were nowhere to be found but this is organic according to a regime change specialist gordon chang <laughs> pushing for john bolton's uh steve bannon's hillary clinton's uh the uh uh, uh wall street bankers uh, efforts to regime change fucking China. <coughs> How dare you leftists say anything good about China. Again, one last fucking time. Um, their numbers. There they are. That's from Google. That are their, uh, that is their official fucking numbers. Say what you will about China. Um, I don't think we're in a position where we can fucking chastise another country on that topic. Okay? Let's just fucking get that set out there. But, you know, all the fucking wannabe fucking Tucker Carlson guests, all the ones who were on fucking, who was that fucking piece of shit? Oh, come on, I can't think of his name. Glenn Beck's fucking show. Trying to fucking tap into that market. That's a good market. That alt-right, right? Not the rhino Republicans, right? But the Republicans, the conservative guys. That market. The manosphere, that whole thing. That's a big market. And so, of course, you have a bunch trying to tap into that. From... The alt left. And you know why, don't you? Because that's the fucking retirement plan for the alt left. Because there's no money. 
and being alt left. There's money being in corporate left, DLC left, neoliberal left, sellout left. There's tons of money in that. Just ask Bernie Sanders. Just ask all the fucking, just ask the gang, whatever the fuck they were called. The fraudulent, fake fucking gang of fake progressive leftists. Ask them. There's money in it. But in real alt left, not much. <laughs> so, Let's let's see what some of these guys say. Huh? Here's Jimmy Dore. <coughs> you ever watch his fucking comedy? His stand up before he became, you know, a celebrity? It is atrocious. He is the unfunniest comedian I have ever fucking seen. Next to that fucking uh, Brennan Schwab. He is just about as bad as Brennan Schwab. The record. record. So, so I was, was covering the China, China uh, protests, protests, right? right? And, and so, so I showed I this. Remember, I showed you there was a fire, and the fire hose couldn't get to the thing, and they blamed it on the COVID restrictions. Well, it turns wow. out it was just because there were cars parked in the street. Oh, so you were uh, wrong because you don't do any actual research. Um, I got you. So remember, I, plug it in. Oh, I didn't plug it in. I got to plug it in. You just oh, fucking, you, you just parrot right. Jennifer Zhang. Okay. That's your first problem right there. So remember I showed you this? And the water couldn't reach the place. Sure, yeah. Now you'd think if there were... They said, how does he actually think a COVID fucking policy stop the firefighters from getting there and showing that? Here's the problem. You were listening to fucking Jennifer Zhang in the first fucking place. That's the problem. That's the difference between a comedian who's bad, a bad comedian, who's, by the way, way supported by YouTube, and somebody who actually does work. Cars actually blocking the road. You think a bunch of guys would just go pick them up, and of you course. can pick up a car. Like five guys can yeah, pick up a car course. and move it. Thank you, Captain. Hudson. Anyway, especially I'm sure those are small cars. But anyway, so Jackson, uh, is that what? Oh, he's got Jackson Hinkle on. Of course he does. He's got Jackson Hinkle on. So uh, he, he was full of shit. His his railings about China and the COVID policies, killing people in a fire. Was full of shit. One thing he didn't fucking show you uh, was, oh, I don't know, this. And why did he do that? Because he loves going on fucking Tucker Carlson's show. That's why. Here's Whitney. Have a listen to a few things Whitney's going to say here. There is a very nuanced case to make from the conservative nuanced. side that criticizes the U.S. relationship with Israel and Zionism in its influence on American foreign policy and even domestic policy in the United States. You know, for people that are listening, I just think it's important to, to point out some of these key points. And one of the most important points out of this is it is documented that as part of the U.S. special relationship, quote unquote, between the U.S. and Israel, the U.S. provides Israel with sensitive U.S. military technology. Since the 90s, it. people in the U.S. national security state, the early 90s, have been going off on how Israel has been sending all of that tech stuff to China. Oh! To undermine our U.S. national security. Ah, 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 China. That's called smear by association. Did you know that? <laughs> she, in the alt-left, which is really her target market, but I mean, she wants to branch out but in the alt left uh more so than in the alt right uh the alt right is really behind israel and go israel and all that shit um the alt left on the other hand we kind of have a problem with i don't know uh stealing land from palestine and syria and lebanon and bombing fucking kids uh, prior to a fucking election from Bibi Netanyahu or whoever, uh, we kind of have a problem with using white phosphorus on schools because we're funny that way. 
So if you want to smear China, what you do is you try to associate China with the thing that the alt-left really doesn't like. Israel. Because Reagan's gone. You know, you can't do that. Israel. There you go. Make that connection between Israel and China and you'll smear China by association. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> because they're trying to undermine us. Don't you all know that China's in on it? China's partnered with the World Economic Forum? And China's all about this? God damn it. It's my fucking doctor. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Yeah, I had to because Lyft wanted to charge me $41 for a one-way trip up there, and I just can't do it. <laughs> Besides, I'm going to get the I'm going to get the Keflex uh, prescription today, so I should be fine with the Keflex, and that's only the re the only reason I came in today. I was going to come in today to get a shot. That's Friday, Friday. My INR was high last uh, Friday, so I'm having to come back this Friday. The what? No, I can't. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not. I, I've got a prescription of the for the pills to coming in today, so I'll be all right. I'll see you Friday. Thank you very much. Bye. I'm probably not going to edit that because I don't know how to edit it. So <laughs> you had to listen to that. Um, where were we? China, right? Smearing China because China's in on it. China's full partner. The whole thing is all about China. That's what the World Economic Forum and all those businesses want. A communist fucking system. Actually, it's not a communist system. The reality is it's a regulated market economy. And all those businesses that have made so much fucking money on free market economies and imposing our fucking will on other countries, they want to transition to that. Right? Well, according to the folks like Jimmy Dore and Whitney Webb, who, by the way, we're going to be doing an interview with between the 4th and the 5th of January, and we will certainly bring this up with her. However, uh, until that happens, we have a little more information for you because it's all about China, and China's the one behind it all, and they're all connected, and they're all working together. Turns out that's not actually true. Who ended the golden age of UK-China relations? Rishi Sunak finds himself compensating for the anti-Beijing hawks in his party with his cautious engagement rhetoric. This is today's news, I believe, from <coughs> yes, yesterday's news, from RT. In a notable speech last week, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak declared the golden age of relations with China to be over. While he urged engagement with Beijing, he nonetheless branded it a competitor and a threat to British values. Which values are those, boys and girls? Would that be slavery? Would that be forcing people into indentured servitude in other fucking cake in other countries so we can never let the sun set on the British Empire? That would be British values. Neoliberal economic ideology. Where did that come from? University of Chicago? Well, here it did. Same place Obama came from, by the way. Milton Friedman and all of that. But it really came from Britain. London School of Economics. Look it up. Such a so-called golden age had been the hallmark of his conservative predecessors, namely the government of David Cameron, who saw Beijing as an economic opportunity for Britain in terms of trade and investment. That sentiment was also briefly signaled by Boris Johnson until the U.S. put its foot down. But despite tough-sounding speech... Sunak still found himself being branded as weak by right-wing anti-China MPs and, of course, Jimmy Dore and fucking Whitney Webb 
in his party and were still accused him of a U-turn by labor. That's because during the conservative leadership election, Sunak seemingly presented himself as an ultra hawk on China, mm, China bad, and branded it the biggest threat to the UK. Comparatively speaking, his recent speech was a massive climb down. But Beijing probably won't be getting its hopes up. If it was not evident yet, Sunak doesn't have a clear or consistent approach towards China. In fact, his stance is riddled with contradictions. He has done nothing to back up his calls for engagement with China, and Beijing doesn't buy it. That's because his actions in practice have amounted to nothing but hostility toward China. But they're all in on it together, Scott. Well, maybe not. As well as a continuing succumbing to U.S preferences on what the UK should or shouldn't do. What does that mean? Well, there's tension between now the UK and the, the, the engagement, the golden age, where they could make all this money. Apple, for instance, all these people who are canceling their contracts with Kanye West. Where was Kanye's clothes being made? Detroit? Bringing those jobs to Detroit? No, fuck no. China. <laughs> the golden age of opportunity. Well, they're kind of walking that shit back. Why are they walking that shit back? But Scott, they're all in on it together. It's just an act. Let's see if that's true. Who should we go to? Who should we go to? Who should we go to? How about this? You guys are going to love this. How about the Brookings Institute? China and the challenge to global order. Oh, shit, Scott. They're challenging the global order by one way, bypassing U.S. dollar hegemony. The global south births a new game-changing payment system. And who's helping them develop that? China. China. BRICS nations. The C means China. Shanghai Cooperation Organization. China. China is a major threat to our fucking hegemony across the globe. The liberal world order. That's why the investors make sure that every fucking night Tucker Carlson is shitting on China. That's why MSNBC, CNN, aside from just Fox, New York Times, Washington Post, they're all shitting on China. Because China poses a massive threat and challenges our global order. This is from not a left-wing commie fucking website. This is from Brookings. <laughs> For two decades, China sought to profit from key arrangements of the global political and economic order. That's right. They were neoliberal. Now, in several, but not all, domains, China seeks to subvert these long-standing arrangements and prevent the emergence of new ones. Our previous neoliberal liberal world order and the Great Reset. This is Brookings. China seeks to subvert these long-standing arrangements and prevent the emergence of new ones in order to broaden its scope for action. It has also started to propose new arrangements under Chinese diplomatic leadership, starting to seek a role as an ordering power, <coughs> as opposed to the current ordering power, which is run by us. And if you don't believe that, well, all you got to do is go back and ask this guy. <coughs> God damn it. Sorry. In response, the United States and its Western allies must adopt their strategies. That does not mean refusing to cooperate with China in areas of common interest, 
But in most domains, the United States must not just look to the leading democracies, but also to a wider constellation of states willing to act in defense of the core purposes of the order. The liberal world order, the one that produced all those fucking billionaires who are members and partners with the World Economic Forum. By surpassing U.S. dollar hegemony, this Global South births new game-changing payment system. This is from 30th November 2022 by Pepe Escobar, published originally on the cra- at the Cradle. Now, this little segment I read for you there, we must focus on not just leading democracies, but also a wider constellation of states, meaning the Global South. We have to focus our attention on getting them under heel. One way we tried to do that, and I talked to you about that in the previous video, was to use the climate change, the COP27 fucking thing. Guess who fucked that up for us? China. By getting together with the group of 77, many of them being part of the Global South, and saying this contract you're, you're, you're offering up doesn't offer us shit, and you saying we're going to put all this money in the IMF, and then the IMF's going to make these fucking loans to us, and we're going to be stuck with stru- structural reforms, and we got to do these fucking things to bring austerity to our people to get this money to save the fucking planet. Bullshit. We're not doing that. And, of course, we said, no, this is the best way to do it. This is the good way to do it. Because it gives them absolute, gives us absolute control over their economies, over their fucking foreign and domestic policies, the whole nine yards. Under the guise of fighting climate change. China got together with those folks and said, you know what? We just put up a different fund that's not with the fucking IMF and it's not with the fucking World Bank. And it's not going to ever impose those kinds of things on you. And it'll help you build up your fucking infrastructure. It'll help you build up fucking whatever you want. Your industries with fucking like nuclear plants as opposed to coal fire plants. We'll do that. <laughs> What's wrong with that? And they, they liked it and they looked at the fucking, looked at us, the existing liberal world order, and they said, hey, why don't we do this? And we said, fuck that. No, we're not going to give you any money. That got some bad press. It made it seem like we didn't really care about climate change. Maybe that the climate change thing really wasn't the whole point in the first goddamn place. And so then we said, okay, well, we'll talk about it. So we have a minor agreement to do that, yet there's no fucking structure on who's going to control the fund, where the fucking money's coming from, when we're going to put money into it. So basically they said, yeah, sure, we'll do it. We'll work it out later. Let's kick that can down the road. Because we don't want to put money up. That's not going to lock them into being a servant for servant nation to us and our oligarchs and the people at the World Economic Forum Partners page. That's why. So China fucked us up with that. Right after that, you have those fake fucking protests and people attacking healthcare workers, uh, unguarded healthcare workers, and running from the police when the police show up. And of course, you have Jimmy Dore pushing that fucking propaganda. Here's Brookings Institute. Here's an article. I'll post this to you right here. Uh, China is um, a threat, I have said this many times before, to our new world order because they offer a different solution. This article gives you more information in terms of how. This again is from Pepe Escobar. Quote, the Eurasia Economic Union, EA. EU is spending, uh, speeding up the design of a common payment system which has been closely discussed for nearly a year with the Chinese under the stewardship of Mr. Glazyev, Sergei Glazyev, the EAEU's Minister in Charge of Integration and Macroeconomy. Through its regulatory body, the Eurasian Economic Commission, the EAEU, I don't know why I'm having a hard time saying that, has just extended a very serious proposal to the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, which crucially are already on the way to turning into BRICS plus, a sort of G20 of the global south. 
The system will include a payment card system in direct competition with Visa and MasterCard, merging the already existing Russian MRI, MIR, China's Union Pay, India's RuPay, Brazil's ELO, and others. That will represent a direct challenge to the Western designed and enforced monetary system head on, and it comes on the heels of BRICS members already transacting their bilateral trade in local currencies bypassing the U.S. dollar. The EAEU BRICS union was long in the making and will now also move toward prefiguring a further geoeconomic merger with the merger with the member nations of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. The EAEU was established in 2015 as a customs union of Russia, Kazakhstan, Belarus, uh, joined a year later by Armenia and Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, I don't know how to pronounce that. Vietnam is already an EAEU free trade partner and recently enshrined SCO member. Iran is also clinching a deal. The Global South, boys and girls. Global South working with Russia and China <coughs> to get people away from the hegemony of the fucking U.S. dollar. Damn. Isn't that what got fucking Muammar Gaddafi killed? But Scott, China, uh, chi chi <laughs> still not enough, huh? The Atlantic. A change may be a coming in China. Following nationwide protests, Chinese government is undertaking a partial rollback of zero COVID policies, but the people there are far from free. Now, I can't read this because uh, it's behind a paywall. Um, but um, basically, the Atlantic is saying, uh, yeah, okay, so there's going to be some rollbacks. And of course, there are some rollbacks on the uh, uh, zero COVID policies. <laughs> They're going to roll that back a little bit. Um, much like Iran, Iran has, is doing away with, supposedly doing away with, the um, morality police. Not because they beat a woman to death like they tried to say. Oh, they beat her to death on the bus. And then, of course, we see a video of her getting out of the bus just fine, no problems, walking along. Um, and until she went to court and was sitting there waiting for her uh, court appearance and she tried to talk to an advocate there who said clearly you should have been wearing this over your head that's the law you should have done it get away from me and then of course this woman went oh, and fell down oh. uh, yeah then we saw fake pictures of her with a tube stuck in her nose um, yeah uh, but still I think the problem was uh, the coverage of 15 women getting off a fucking bus and having to go to court and sitting in court because they did or did not wear something on their head. Again, this is their religion. I'm not going to fucking talk about it. But uh, apparently that wasn't that wasn't the impression that the Iranians wanted the world to see. So the eye test apparently has force them to, okay, we're going to get off the fucking morality police thing because it really is kind of, you know, it's, it, you're just picking up a bunch of women on their way to work or wherever they're fucking going. <laughs> and it, let's just stop doing that. Now, I saw an article, I saw an, uh, a bit on fucking ABC this morning where Iranians in Utah were saying, that's not enough. We have to regime change. Which tells you the whole purpose of the fake story about the woman fucking being beaten to death in the van uh, was never about the fucking morality police. They don't care about the morality police, the, the Iranians in the United States. All they want is fucking regime change. By the same token, those organic protests that took place, uh, that we have all the videos of, those organic fucking protests in China against the zero COVID policy. They're rolling back the policies and all of a sudden now we don't care about that. We want regime change, like the Atlantic points out. They want regime change. You don't, you don't want regime change 
and a country that's on board and helping you bring about the Great Reset. That's that's the issue. That's boiling it down in a nutshell. <laughs> that's the issue. You don't lie about people dying in a fire using their fucking tragedy to your own political fucking benefit, Jimmy Dore, <laughs> because you want to keep uh, Xi Jinping, Jimmy, in power. You do that because you want to regime change the country. And you don't want to regime change a country that's on board with the Great Reset. Okay? I've just told you, shown you, clearly, that China is a threat. How is China a threat? A China is a threat to our liberal world order. They have a system. Communism? No. They have a regulated market economy. The key word there is regulated. Dear God, don't let fucking... From fucking Nixon all the way until now. Not only have your wages and 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 your fucking quality of life remained stagnant that entire time while big business and the CEOs and the billionaires got richer and richer and richer, way off the fucking charts. But also, they've all been anti-regulation, including Obama administration, who used Cass Sunstein as his regulation czar to cut all those regulations out of the way for banking and big business to fuck you over. <laughs> That's the difference. We had a regulated market economy from about 1932 until about 1979, and it created a fucking the world's first middle class. And we did okay. We did all right. We had problems we needed to fix, but for the most part, uh, we were on the right path. Then we had to change it because big business hates that word regulation. That's what China has. And China is offering a better fucking mousetrap to the global south, to the fucking uh, gang of 77. They have a better fucking offer in terms of helping them avoid climate change or rebuild their fucking economies or just getting the fuck off of a goddamn debt servitude model that we offer so that people like George Soros and others can come in there and build billions out of their fucking economies and stuff them in his pockets. China doesn't serve their fucking oligarchs the same way we serve ours. That's the difference. Well, there's other differences. Uh, hmm, let's see. Oh, that's right. mRNA faux vaxes aren't being mandated uh, to the Chinese. Whereas Joe tried his best to make sure that every fucking American had to get one of those fucking jabs in his arm, in, our, in, in their arms. <laughs> Why? Because the World Economic Forum and those 2,000 fucking businesses said, this is our plan, this is our, we've got, a, we've, got a, we've got an agenda, and because Pfizer and Moderna wanted it. Because our government serves business. In China, business serves the nation. And when business tries to overstep those bounds, the Chinese make them pay. Wouldn't that be interesting if we did the same thing here, which, by the way, is really what this piece of shit from Fox News is talking about? Gordon Chang blasts global leftist adoration for Chinese government system. Now, of course, Klaus Schwab and them aren't doing that. But the reality is, that was our system. And if that was the system that was in place today, boys and girls, <laughs> there would never have been a faux vaccine mandate to start with. 
It just wouldn't have happened. Anyway, there's today's video on China. Uh, just so you know, the more you know. Uh, I don't mean to crack down on, on Whitney too much. <coughs> she is correct in that, yes, China did, uh, or Israel did, in fact, uh, do sell some trade secrets or some secrets to China. But then again, they also sold them to fucking South Africa. They actually gave South Africa nukes. We tried to. Apartheid South Africa. Cute, huh? Anyway, I got to run. Uh, thank you guys very much for your time. And I will talk to you later. And uh, <laughs> at night, when it's really dark, and you just turn that thing on, his eyes just glow. Anyway, I'll talk to you. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.